Thank you so much for joining today's uh, webinar. Uh, we had an exciting day at Integra Resources. We announced an updated mineral resource estimate at Delamar, which included uh, the results from the very successful stockpile drill program at the project. Uh, joining me today on the call is Jason Kosek, President, CEO, and Director of Integra. We've planned a brief presentation on the updated mineral resource estimate that was released this morning, and then we can open up the webinar for questions. Uh, please note your microphones have been muted. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the chat feature in Zoom. Um, the webinar will be recorded and posted to the company's website. Uh, as you may imagine, panelists, Jason and myself, will be making forward-looking statements. So please refer to the news release, uh, the presentation, and the website for more information if you want to review that disclosure. Um, with that said, I'll pass it over to Jason uh, and you know, look forward to... Uh, taking some of your questions when the presentation is is over. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, Josh, and thank you uh, everyone for, for joining today. First and foremost, uh, I'd like to thank the team, uh, both here in Boise and at Delamar to, to successfully deliver this resource estimate. It wasn't an easy feat, especially drilling in the winter. Um, they are able to get it done and well above what, what we were guiding the market and well above what we really expected. As Josh mentioned, we will be making forward-looking statements. The full disclaimer is on the company's website, and I encourage everyone to, to review that. Uh, just quickly, just wanted to highlight uh, before we get into the mineral resource estimate that we just released, is that uh, this was the PFS heap leach component um, of, the, of the study that we released last year. What went into this study um, obviously, that contributes the $314 million of MPV, 33% IRR, was 81 million tons, okay? The current resource that we just um, put out adds another 40 to 40, 45 million tons uh, of, of M&I that will go into the company's updated feasibility study at the end of next year, okay? So really adding on value, you know, we've modeled the, the stockpiles that are coming on at the end. Um, the, co the company and, and, and our management team is going through the optimization work as we speak and how that fits into the mine plan. Um, we'll have a better understanding as they do that optimization work. Um, what do we got at the end of the day? Like I said, we just added 504,000 uh, ounces of M&I at a gold equivalent grade of 0.37, 46,000 ounces at 0.3 in the inferred category. We are using an $1,800 pitch shell, $21 silver. Mining costs vary uh, with the in situ at 220 a ton, uh, with the stockpiles at 190 a ton. The difference is, is that you have to remember that these stockpiles sit right at surface, okay? Um, so there's no drill and blast component. The resource that we just put out is a 25% growth in MI in the heap leachable uh, resource estimate, 30% growth in the inferred category, uh, and 90% of this resource is within MI. Okay. Uh, processing costs vary depending on whether you're in the oxide or in the mixed, basically from $3 to $5 a ton, and it varies through Delamar and through Florida Mountain. Okay. We're only going to be really focusing on the uh, on the oxide component of this, as there is no material change on the in situ uh, resource. Right now, the total resource at Delamar uh, M and I sits at 4.7 million ounces of M and I and 621,000 of inferred. Uh, there is no change in what we did in the PFS from um, a resource estimation perspective, we're still using ID3 interpolation. Block sizes did not change six by six by six at Delamar, six by eight by eight at Florida Mountain. Pit walls did not change 30 to 45 degrees. Uh, and it should be noted the life of mine recovery for the heat bleach component is 72%. Quickly, for people, some people that aren't familiar with the Delamar project. We are located in southwestern Idaho, um, 
all on BLM land. Most of the mineral resource sits on patented claims, okay? When we zoom into the project, the resource is composed of milestone. The big portion is the Delamar pit and then Florida mountain to the east. Okay, when we look at it now, I think the important thing that we have to remember is that the wall, Glen Silver, Summer Camp, Delamar Backfill, Florida Mountain, uh, and some of Jacob's Gulch were all in the pre production capex as a pre strip. Uh, we have now moved that material and it'll go directly on the pad, okay? How we optimize this, like I mentioned earlier, is really um, the work that the team is ongoing and doing currently. Uh, what we envision is that some of the Florida Mountain um, backfill that has to be removed as a pre-strip will go on to the heap leach pad first, followed by Jacob's Gulch, because that will be where the Florida Mountain um, development rock storage facility will go. And then the rest of the material from the backfills will go on to the heap leach and then followed by Delamar. And lastly, most likely, is the other stockpiles from, from one and two. Really, that is just scratching the surface here at Delamar, okay? Uh, we still have a lot of exploration upside, uh, both at Black Sheep, Twin Peaks, Milestone, Tennessee Mountain, uh, and also all of the sulfides that sit under Florida Mountain in Delamar. Remember, these are low sulfidation epithermals. So what you're looking at in the current resource is really just the cap of the mushroom, the high grade stem of the material uh, that sits below these pits has still a significant uh, exploration upside. And we drilled some significant intercepts, you know, 10 grams, uh, over 34 meters at War Eagle, you know, 0. 0.76 in 69 uh, gram silver uh, at Sullivan Gulch. So there's still a lot of untapped upside that sits on, on, on this land package. You know, it's important to know uh, the scarcity of these projects, okay? So when we look at the projects globally, uh, from the precious metals perspective, there's just over 2,800 projects globally uh, with a resource estimate. Then we want to remove projects that aren't located in the U.S., that don't have a valid economic study, uh, that their initial capex is over 300 million. Their average life of mine uh, production profile is less than 80,000 ounces, and that is not owned by a major mining company. And what we are left with is four projects of which Integra has two, okay? What do these projects um, go for? The average acquisition cost on an ounces basis is over $100. We currently trade at $7 an ounce, okay? It should be noted that the 550,000 ounces that we added cost the company just $4.6 million. Uh, which is the lowest cost per discoverable ounce in the company's history. Um, as I mentioned, the $314 million of NAV that was in the PFS, we added another 25% of, of gold equivalent heap leach ounces. Um, we also do have our Nevada projects that right now sit at around 310 million of NAV. So on a combined basis, uh, you have exposure to just over $624 million of U.S. NAV. We are currently a $65 million company with around $20 million U.S. in the bank. The average acquisition cost on a PNAV consensus basis sits between 0.5 uh, and, and 0.9 on a PNAV consensus, like I said. And the average acquisition, you know, the recent transactions, you know, Orla would that require GSV, uh, the Goldfields District project for 207. There's a severe scarcity for, for this size and scalability of these projects. Where we sit relative to our peer group, um, we're just over 7 million ounces now, making us the largest gold and silver resource endowment 
in the Great Basin that is not owned by a major mining company, of which just over 4.5 million ounces uh, is in the leachable category, okay? I think it's important to note, you see on the right, these are all producing assets in the Great Basin. And the way we should all look at projects to compare apples to apples is on a strip adjusted grade basis. And that has a significant impact, obviously, uh, to the project economics. And I think it's very important to, to understand that grade is not king and, and margin is king, just like any other business in the world. So when we look at it, uh, Delamar sits at 0.26 on a strip adjusted grade basis. Um, and the Nevada projects sit at 0.39 with average recoveries over the life of mine in line with everything else that is producing in the basin. So these are high quality, high margin projects in the best mining jurisdiction in the world. Um, what does that get at the end of the day? Um, when you look at a pro forma production profile basis is that you get over 216,000 ounces of annual production all within the Great Basin. You know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just doing what great companies have done in the past, like Orla in, in, in 2019 or, or, or Miller Alamos in, in 2019 as well with their merger with Corex. So companies that produce this type of uh, production profile and have a have a hefty margin uh, like Orla, like us, uh, you know, d deserve a, a, a premium uh, to, to, to the NAV. And, and really what we're trying to do here is build the, the next mid-tier gold producer uh, in the basin. Um, you know, one thing I strongly believe is rapid project advancement and disciplined risk-taking to maximize shareholder value, okay? The, the reality is this is a risky business, and, and we all know that, okay? And we our goal is to minimize those risks. And why we believe in rapid project advancement is the biggest killer of these companies is the time value of money, okay? You know, since we did the merger, we completed the financing, we completed the PA, which was well above what the market expected, completed the, the the resource estimate, again, above market expectations. And next on the docket is the mine plan of operations, which really kicks off the two-year um, NEPA permitting process. It should be noted that we will be the next permanent project in the Great Basin, again, adding to that scarcity factor. Uh, what's next is the feasibility uh, at uh, Delamar, followed by significant resource growth at Wildcat and Mountain View as those projects have only been drilled on a five acre permit. We'll then um, have a completion of the EIS at Delamar, the feasibility and the mine plan submitted at Wildcat, all in while continued uh, news flow from the drill bit uh, and, and resource growth from Mountain View. And at the end of the day in 2026, we'll have a record of decision at Delamar and a finding of no significant impact uh, at Wildcat. And what that finding of no significant impact is, is basically a record of decision, but uh, the FONSI is tied to the EA process. Significant, a little bit different than, than what we have to do at, at Delamar. Uh, if people have questions, we can go into it later. So what do you get at the end of the day? You have the largest gold and silver resource endowment uh, that's not owned by a major mining company. You get a production profile that's well over 200,000 ounces per annum with ASIC costs sub $1,000, so hefty margin. A team that's done this eight times, of the eight times, uh, six of those projects are, are, are in production or in construction today. We have significant financial strength and, and backing from partners like BD Capital uh, and Wheaton Precious Metals. Uh, that really um, give a stamp of, of, of project validity and offset a, a lot of the uh, financing risks tied to, to um, project financing. Um, with that, it's a brief summary of, of the mineral resource estimate that we put out today. I'd like to open the floor for, for questions. Perfect. Thanks, Jason. Uh, I think one of the questions uh, that we've gotten and, and has been asked is, if this material is so great, why didn't Kinross go after it or the previous operators? Yeah, so lucky for us, they didn't. Um, 
what it was was if it didn't meet the mill cutoff, they were milling everything. Kinross was milling everything. So the mill cutoff was about 0.85. And then all that material was in stockpile that they would in the future possibly process through through heap leach and, and, and they just didn't make it that far. You talked about these ounces being potentially lower cost in future mining scenarios. Can you just take us through through why that is exactly? Yeah, so from a cost perspective, as you see, let me just get it here. Um, all this material is is sitting right at surface, okay? Uh, it's already been drilled, already been blasted. Uh, the 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 team, the engineering he- team here in Boise is is just doing the the metallurgical work, but recoveries are in line. So really, it's a, it's a free dig scenario. So you you save about thirty cents a ton uh, on your operating costs. Not only that, as you see um, with with oops, let me just get back here. Um, with Wall and uh, Glenn Silver, Summer Camp, Delamar, the Florida Mountain, and even Jacobs Gulch, all those had to be moved um, in, 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 the, in the PFS, okay? Um, with exceptions to Jacobs Gulch, uh, but that will have to be moved anyways uh, for, for the fees because it's where the waste rock storage facility is. So not only is it a lower operating cost because the material has already been drilled to blast, but it was also factored into the pre-production cabinet. So again, adding quality, and as I mentioned, uh, you know, it costs the company four point six million dollars to drill these, um, which is the lowest cost per discoverable ounce in, in, in the company's history. So significant value creation. Um, commonly, in, in, in these types of systems, for inferred ounces, it costs around twenty to thirty million dollars for 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 a million ounces. So uh, well above, well below the, the, that average. And so. The Delamar PFS heap leach only is seven to eight years. Do you think that you've, you know, this is a forward looking statement you're about to make, but do you think that you've got the resource here now where you, you know, you can confidently get us get over the 10 year or 10 year mark? Yeah. So uh, again, it, it really comes down to how we optimize this. Okay. So right now, as you see, they're just tacked on to the end. What drove this number was 81 million tons. We just added 45 million tons. So as I mentioned before, again, these are forward-looking statements, but some most likely will come on at the beginning, some will be blended, and then the lower grade material will, will come on the end, okay? But it's all about how the team optimizes it is, is, is really the question. But do I believe that it's gonna push 10 years? Yes. And it, it was really refreshing to see an M and I resource, an indicated resource. Um, what what drove that versus? I think initially we, the thought was this would be an inferred resource on the stockpiles. Yeah, and all, you know we're, we're lucky that the grade continuity is is quite spectacular. You know, most of it was drilled on sixty with some short range variability at thirty, so we could see what the conversion rate is. You know, we probably could have brought more into the inferred category, but on the toes of the um, on the toes of these of the uh, on the toes of here uh, of the of the stockpiles, some of it couldn't be drilled from a from a disturbance perspective. And then on the on the high walls, it was just kind of unsafe to get in there w- with a drill. So, you know, the grade continuity, the the, the modeling of each dump. Showing the short range variability, it gave the team a lot of confidence, um, um, both from for all those sakes that uh, it, it can get into the indicated category. So now the real focus of the team at Delamar, particularly, turns to the mine plan of operations. So, um, you know, can you take us through sort of next steps with that, and then let's shift a little bit to Nevada and talk a little bit about Wildcat Mountain View. But if you could just kind of wrap up with mine plan here at Delamar. Yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, the team here in Boise has done an amazing job. Uh, they completed all of the baseline work. So your flora, fauna, hydro, cultural, that was completed two weeks ago. They're just compiling all the data for, for the uh, mine plan of operations report that will be submitted to, to, the, to the BLM 
uh, by the end of the year. That then kicks off your two-year NEPA process. Um, so we believe we should have a record of decision sometime in 26. Perfect. And so it's been a busy year for, for us, obviously the merger in, in March and then the closing of that in May, updated PEA at the two Nevada assets, Wildcat and Mountain View, updated resource here in Delamar and then the mine plan coming. Can you just talk quickly about, obviously the merger was transformational. It was something you don't see a lot in our sector. Can you talk a little bit about the integration and then how you see Wildcat and Mountain View, you know, combining with Delamar to create this next mid-tier gold silver producer? Yeah, so, you know, again, bringing back why we did this merger in the first place, okay, frankly, there, there's there's too many junior companies out there right? and there's not enough capital uh, to go around and, and more importantly, there's not enough management teams to manage these projects, okay? Um, and what the, the merger did is, is it lowered the, the two companies' GNA significantly around two to two and a half million dollars uh, not only that is as Delamar goes into the permitting phase, um, you got to remember that Wildcat and Mountain View have only been drilled on a five acre permit. And we'll have the exploration plan of operations in end of Q1, early Q2. Uh, and that will really um, start off the, the, the real kind of exploration that those neither of those projects have ever seen. OK, so we're going from five acres at Wildcat to 400 acres of available disturbance and the same thing with mountain view uh we put out the the pea uh just as a base case and remember 80 percent of the, the resource uh that fed that pea was indicated most peas are 20 percent indicated okay so it's a very robust pea uh we believe in radical transparency so we put that out so that now when we step out people can update their dcfs and see how when we step out, how those tons will impact and impact the now. And as I mentioned, you know, the assets really complement each other as well, uh, because when Delamar goes into this, the NEPA process, we're still stimulating the market with really exploration, euphoria and big step out holes and, and, and consistent news flow from the from the drill bit. Perfect. And then I think just lastly, um... You know, what are you hearing from shareholders, from, you know, st the strategic partners, BD and Wheaton, that are in the story? Um, you know, where's their view in terms of next steps for the project? Yeah, I think that everyone's really in line. And, and you know, you, you, in, in these markets, yeah, they're tough. But, you know, one thing is, is I, I tell everyone is that we can't control the market. All we can do is keep on delivering on, on what we say we're going to do. And, you know, this is now... Uh, the second deliverable, we have one more, which is the mine plan. Okay, what they've said is is really keep on going, keep pushing forward. Uh, don't take your foot off the gas pedal, uh, and they will be very supportive uh, moving forward. Okay, and again, I mentioned um, just because we're in a you know bad equity market, uh, uh, you know you can't slow these things down uh, because the biggest killer, as I mentioned, is the time value of money. Okay. Perfect. Well, I think that wraps up the webinar and the updated mineral resource estimate at Delamar. This was recorded. So if you people weren't able to join or you joined late, uh, a recording will be available in the next couple of days on our website. Uh, but appreciate everyone for taking the time. Thanks, Jason, for, for joining. Uh, and we look forward to some more exciting news out of, out of Delamar, Mountain View, and Wildcat over the next couple of months and weeks. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone.